Hello everybody and welcome to Le Mans in France for the last round of the 2013 NASCAR Win and Euro Series. On board for the first elite race of the weekend is Frederick Gabion in 2 minutes 9.505 ahead of the Swiss Jan Zimmer and the Swiss Freddy Nordstrom. This grand final is decisive as the point will be as Monza doubled. Three contenders separated by 35 points can still be crowned. Under Villarino, the reigning champion, Frederick Gabion and the young Jan Zimmer. Let's go on board with the current championship leader, Villarino, in sixth position. As you can see, it's not that easy to find his place at the start. Russo goes wide, and there's a contact for the Spaniard who can lose everything from now. There's also a spin for Bruno Cousin, who aims to win the Challenger Trophy against Guillaume Rousseau. Spaniards restarted 17th as it takes one spot from Nathalie Maillet, number 46, racing club partners before turn 7. Gonna go wide, Villarino takes another spot. The TFT driver begins to recover for him in his spin. He's set in 11th place before the end of the first lap. To keep a chance to win the championship, Villarino has to gain some places as Gabion leads the race. Lap 2. The reigning champion is already behind the newcomer Fabrizio Armeta, number 54. In the Challenger Trophy, Guillaume Russo benefits from the difficulties of Bruno Cousin to pull away. He doesn't take any risk. He's sixth as Cousin, number 55, is behind Yagi in 13th place. Frederick Gabion leads the race with a sizable gap over Borja Garcia who races in the championship for the first time. The Frenchman knows that Villarino had early problems in the race. If he wins while leading most laps, he will take 96 points. Borja Garcia is second in the 19 car. On board with Villarino behind Guillaume Rousseau. He dives on the inside to take sixth place. Great move by the Spaniard, who is determined to win the championship. In the Jerome Saron Junior Trophy, Willy Busena has had a drive through penalty after his move in the opening lap. The 2009 champion will finish 10. The battle for Thevens is intense as Garbarino, second in the Jerome Saron Junior Trophy, overtakes Fabrizio Armeta. Zimmer, number 33, is the first junior. He's third ahead of Yanetta and Villarino, already fifth. The Swiss had some difficulties in this first race. Yanetta dives on the inside at the S Blue, but it doesn't work. On board with Villarino. And Yanetta takes the inside to overtake Zimmer. But the Swiss doesn't want to update. He will be on the outside for the next turn. Can Villarino make the most of it? And it works for Yanetta. And for Villarino, Dimmer is no fifth. The two cars have already pulled away slightly. Villarino is fourth after a spin in the first corner. What a performance for the reigning champion. His countryman Borja Garcia heads on to second place for his first outing in NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. He will be a man to watch in the future. And the winner of this race is the Frenchman Frederic Gabion. He scored a third win this season and reduces the gap to 20 points on his Spanish rival before the last race of 2013. Timo, the first junior, finishes fifth, but suddenly loses his last chance to win the championship. Gabion celebrates his win, his third this season. The Frenchman is congratulated by Joaquin Gabaron in the pit lane. At the start, it was a little bit complicated because we decided to start with a car that would be good at the end of the race. I saw Garcia very fast behind me, but I calmed down in order to not to make any mistake. And that we start from pole position tomorrow. We have won, we knew that we had to win today, and we will see tomorrow what happens. First part of the contract is done, so I'm very happy for the rapid racing by Steel Team. I want to thank everybody, Eric Ellery, Joaquin Gabron, and my parents. The suspense is high before the last elite race of the season. We are back for the second elite race on the Bugatti circuit. Under Villarino starts from pole position thanks to the best lap he did during the first heat. 
He leads Frederick Gabion and Roman Yaneta. Let's go on board with the RDV competition driver, Roman Yaneta. Filarino and Gabion are side by side before the first chicane. Gabion take the advantage on the Spaniard. Oh, and Roman Yaneta goes wide to avoid Villarino. As Guillaume Russo and Fred Nordstrom spin, will everybody avoid them? No! David Amaduzzi, number 68, it's the Frenchman, but Russo can go on to fight for the Challenger Trophy against Cozan. Up front, Gabion has taken the lead. Borja Garcia is second, and Villarin took it easy at the start. He's third, and potentially 2013 champion. The Frenchman is ahead of two Spaniards, two Frenchmen, and the Swiss, Jan Zima, only in sixth position. In these tricky conditions, Gabion shines. He has to win to keep a chance to be crowned. But before the end of the opening lap, the safety car goes out as Didier Beck crashed at the Chemin Aubert chicane. The RDV competition driver won't be hurt, but the medical crew took the necessary time to evacuate him. After more than 10 minutes, it's a double fire restart. Gabion has to take attention to Borja Garcia and Ander Villarino, who are always very quick in this situation. Let's ride on board with Jerome Saron, Junior Trophy's leader, Jan Zimmer, who overtakes Anthony Garbarino at the restart to take fifth. First chicane, everybody take it carefully, except cousin Armeta and Gandon who go wide. Gabion already begin to pull away ahead of Garcia and Yaneta. Villarino didn't take any risks and he is even fifth behind Jan Zima. Cousin who leads the Challenger Trophy is under the threat of the Swede, Fred Nordstrom. The Frenchman locks his wheel, and there's a contact! Both cars spins, and Cousin loses a lot of time. He recovers just ahead of Russo at the pole position. 81 driver only scores two points more than his rival. It's not sufficient to win the trophy. On board with Villarino, just behind Jan Zima, the Spaniard controls and heads on to a second title in a row. Oh, and he's hit! He's hit by Almeta, who hood breaks himself. Villarino takes it easy and gone after a perfect 360. He thicks and scores 79 points, while Gabion scores 96. If he doesn't have a puncture, he's the new champion. But at the same time, the number 46 Toyota driven by Natalie Maia is pushed in the wall by Stefan Yergi. The female driver is unhurt, but her car is totally destroyed. The race is red flagged, Gabion wins. In his fourth win of the season after having led every lap, Roman Yaneta is second and Yanzima third, as Borja Garcia took a 30 seconds penalty to have cut Chicane earlier in the race. We knew that we had to win both races, start ahead of the pack, and that what we did. Under had more points, so we knew that he could manage it. We are very satisfied with our season. We did not lose the championship here, but at the first meeting in Nogaro. For a first year in NASCAR, I'm pretty pleased. Gabi and Yaneta and Zima, the winner of the Jerome Saron Jr. Trophy, are on the podium. Russo wins the Challenger Trophy ahead of Cousin. Whereas Under Villarino is the new 2013 champion. For the second year in a row, the Spaniard is crowned. Is congratulated by the whole TFT team. Pilarino with his kids before receiving his trophy from Jérôme Galpin and George Silberman from NASCAR. With seven wins, eight pole positions and eight podiums, Ander Villarino has perfectly controlled the championship to win his second NASCAR title in a row. 
To be a NASCAR champion for a European guy is something really strange. Um, some years ago, this was something that didn't exist, and I think no one here could dream about being a NASCAR champion. Now I'm uh, two times NASCAR champion, and it's really like a dream. I think the key is that you have to, you have to desire to win more than the others. And this is what I think, what I'm telling me every day. And then he works a lot, he works a lot. He, he tries to be perfect, uh, physical and mental, mentally. And uh, that work is that uh, it uh, takes to, to the wins. To succeed in NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, drivers have to rely on a solid team such as Tony Pereira's TFT. The secret of our team is that we are like a family. Everybody, we're working together every weekend, we support each other, and even when the moments are very difficult, we, we never give up and uh, we try to improve and to, to win. In 2013, the Spaniard had to be consistent to be crowned champion. But what are his best memories of racing? I would say there were two big moments in my season. The second race in Nogaro, when I was uh, penalized by, uh, push, by, by uh, spinning out one, one driver, and I, I had a drive-through penalty. Uh, from the first place, I went to the sixth place, and then I came back and won the race. So uh, this moment was really amazing. And then um, I would say the first race of the playoffs in, in Monza, because it was the beginning of the playoffs and uh, starting well, it was very important. Despite his success, the TFT Banco Santander driver has even had some difficult moments. I think Stur's race was my biggest disappointment of the year. Um, I went there with six straight wins and uh, I thought it would be a good weekend for us. But I was pushed out in both races and I finished eighth and tenth, I think. And uh, not good results for our season, but next year I hope to, to win in Tours. When, the, when he doesn't uh, win or he has a lot of difficulty, uh, that, uh, that night uh, I, I'm really strong with him. I want him to win uh, the next day, so I, I, sometimes I think I'm, I'm strong with him. As every champion, Honda Villarino began racing at an early age and he had to do some sacrifices to reach his aim. I started racing when I was three years and a half or four years in go-karts. Because my father was a racing driver, he, he was racing in hill climbs and he was an example for me. Well, you sacrifice a lot of time, time with your family, time with your wife, with your kids, because you go training and you travel a lot. And, uh, but I love it, so it's part of my life and um, everybody around me understands it. I knew him being a, a driver, so I, I, I think that I couldn't uh, stay without races. When he had a, a really big accident, when he ran in high clip, uh, I pushed him to, to to continue racing. Now my wife comes with me to every race and she suffers a lot. And uh, it's wonderful having her with, with me in every race. This NASCAR win and Euro Series Championship takes place in Europe, but has all the ingredients who have done the success of the Sprint Cup Series in the United States since many years. I have to say many thanks to NASCAR for having come here in Europe. And many thanks to the people who organize here in Europe, to Team FG. This kind of sport didn't exist here with all these rules, with all these kind of races. And I think uh, it's going to be very, very good for the race fans in Europe. Back to racing with the first open division race and on pole for the second round of the playoff, where the points are doubled, is Josh Burton. The Scorpus Racing Forza Motorsport driver is followed by Guillaume Rousseau and Fabrizio Armeta. Anthony Gando only starts in sixth position and will have to overtake if he doesn't want to lose too many points. The cars are on double file, so let's go on board with Anthony Gando for the start. As the lights go green, Guppy tries to take the inside on Rousseau, but it doesn't work. After the 
Panthers Chicane Burden leads ahead of Russo and Armeta, coming in fifth. Here are the standings before turn seven. Burden, Russo, Armeta, and Gandon, who tries to overtake the Italian. Dupi has lost time, whereas Tiff Needle, Top Gear's creator, is seventh ahead of Gono. The Australian Burden will do his best to dig the gap on Gandon. He's first, as his rival is fourth. Russo is second in front of Armeta at the end of the opening lap. Three cars are battling hard. On lap two, there is a crash at the chicane. Verne pushes back as Cosella tries to avoid the number 22 for Mustang, but is hit by the Scopus racing driver Silesh Bolesetti. The race is over for the Indian as the safety car goes out, so the marshals can clean the racetrack. Let's go on board with Anthony Gandon for the restart. Slight contact between Armeta and Rousseau as Burden gets passed by the Cal racing driver. 21-year-old Australian breaks hard on the inside line but stays second. Gandin is third behind his championship rival. Every place counts for the title. At turn seven, Armeta leads, whereas Guppy is threatening Rousseau. The rapid racing by steel driver is fourth. He has to overtake his rival to keep it third place in the championship. Armeta, Burden, Gandin. Here is the top three. In the Legend Trophy, Verne was involved in the crash at the sea chicane, and his car has the scars of it. Jerome Laurent, his direct rival, is ahead and has a new slight advantage to win this trophy. Let's remind you that thanks to Rin Engineering, every trophy winner will have the opportunity to do a race in the United States. Jack Godin, the 85 Chevrolet, leads the Legend Trophy here at Le Mans and will win for the second time this year. Up front, the battle continues. Armeta is the new leader for his first meeting in Nazca Willen, ahead of Burden and Goupy. Oh, and Gandon is fourth, and there's a contact! The Frenchman has been surprised by a slowing down from Goupy. The number 44 recovers after a perfect 360. The leading trio is back, Armeta first, ahead of Burden and Gandon. Burden is very close to Armeta. The Australian does a perfect bump and run in the NASCAR style to take first place. Armeta is passed by Gandon. The duel for the championship is about to give his verdict. Burden and Gandon have led the championship since the beginning of the year, and everything can happen during the grand final. A great scenario. Frank Violas, number one, is on the verge of winning the gentleman trophy for the second time this year. The current trophy leader, Joaquin Gabaron, has a difficult weekend with the loss of his father earlier this week. He takes some points to increase his gap over Quinta. Seventh wins of the year for Josh Burden, who has the advantage in the championship. Gandon is second, ahead of Russo and Almeta. Kupi finishes fifth in front of Gono and Violas. Burden is happy. He celebrates his win in style. He's seventh this year. Uh, it was an awesome race. We come from pole, got a good lead on the first two laps on cold tyres and was looking to control the race a little bit and see how it goes and unfortunately the safety car so it bunched the field back up and I had the Italian guy next to me at the start and was very close into turns one and two and I got squeezed to the maximum so I had to back out. I didn't really uh, think it was that fair but uh, it's just another race down. We survived. It's my greatest win of the season. I'm stoked right at the right time. Scorpus, the team, worked very hard. Xbox, uh, Forza and also I'm sorry for that little tap on that Italian guy. Uh, I don't know what happened. He just seemed to stop in the middle of the corner. On the podium, the young Australian is delighted as he now leads the championship by 14 points before the last race of the season. On pole for the second open race of the Le Mans finals is Anthony Gandon. The Frenchman is in front of Vincent Gono, who was very quick this weekend, and Julian Goupy. Josh Burden starts fourth. Let's ride on board with Guillaume Russo at the start.
first chicane, everything is difficult and the phone number 13 driver slides and loses two places. It's even worse for Burden who had to avoid number 85 car of Jack Gooden. The championship leader is Nils after the first chicane. Kandon Gupi, here is the duo of the opening lap. Gunnoy third ahead of Russo, Pastor, Armeta and Burden. The Australians overtake Gabaron and third seven. Gupi is the leader at the Chemin Obochi Cane. Burden is back in sixth position. He would score 76 points, which is not sufficient if Gunn wins. Small mistake from Gupi at the first chicane. Gandon immediately takes the lead. And on lap three, Russo goes on the inside, but he breaks too late. And we see on board the contact with Gupi. The Frenchman, number 44, is very hungry. And he eats burden as he comes back to the track. That's terrible news for the Australian. Can the championship leader continue the race? He goes to the pits in order to change his puncture rear tire. At the same time, Gano still leads the race, whereas Gano locks his brakes at the chicane. Gabaron, number five, is the first gentleman, the sixth ahead of Gupi and Violas. Eric Quintal, another gentleman, takes 10th place from Joseph Cosella. The TFT driver takes the most of Christophe de Fiel and DNS due to a crash during the elite race to consolidate second place in the gentleman trophy behind Gabaron. Gandon is the leader and heads on to the title, where has Burden has to do good lap times, but he's still at the end of the pack in 14th place. Without any safety car, the Australian won't be able to come back. In the Legend Trophy, Xavier Michel leads for his first meeting in NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series ahead of Jerome Laurent and Leonard Vernet. The pole position 81 driver is on the verge of winning a race in the United States. In the closing stage, Gono gets hit by Pastor, but it rejoins in third place. A 30 seconds penalty would be given to the Philippine driver for this available contact. After a race that he dominated, 16 laps led. Out of 17, Gunnar wins the race and clinch his first NASCAR title in the Open Division. Gunnar is second, ahead of Gupi, Armeta, Gabaron and Pastor. Huge joy for the Red Devil from TFT. <laughs> celebrates in style. The young Frenchman is delighted and is congratulated by his team and his teammate under Villarena. I want to thank my team who offered me a perfect car during the whole season. We never had a mechanical problem that was very important. Thank you to my parents, without them I wouldn't be here. Thanks to my friends as well and the people who supported me. Anthony Gandin is crowned champion ahead of Josh Burden who had been very unlucky during these playoffs. Gabaron with the gentleman trophy whereas Laurent is the first legend. So that's it for the 2013 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series season. See you in 2014 for more action.